Hey guys, and welcome to Kerbot Wars! This is the ultimate competition for fighting robots in Kerbal Space Program, where we take some of the biggest, meanest, most aggressive robots and set them into head-to-head -head combat to discover which is the most merciless and brutal design. Six robot teams have gathered at my purpose-built fighting arena to face off in epic battle. The competition will take the form of three 1v1 face-offs with the victors from each battle going into the final three-man melee, from which the Kerbot Wars Season 1 Champion will emerge. Now that we have set the stage, let's take a closer look at the first two contestants to enter the Mighty Battle Arena. Coming straight from the production line of ZTech Industries, the latest machine of mayhem, the VI-2. With a grabbing cargo bay at the front, its most powerful asset might actually be the multitude of wheels contained within this one design. Forged by Weatherflyer in the heat of SRB separation, this is the Javelin. A jet-powered beast of a robot with an impressive double stack of flea projectiles and a sturdy six-wheel drive. Our Kerbal cameraman appears to be in position, so let's head on over to the arena so we can do some battle. Activate. And so the first robot battle of Kerbal Space Program gets underway. We have ZTech in the V1 on the right and we have Weatherflyer in the Javelin on the left. They appear to be trying to face up against each other as I hear the jet engine from the Javelin starts pulling up. We're going to ride with ZTech here to see how this first approach comes down. They are getting close and... Well, a little swipe away from each other there. I would have expected contact to have happened, but no, the, the lineup was wrong. I should imagine the Javelin is trying to get an angle to come around and fire those projectiles. I was really quite looking forward to someone trying to build a uh, rocket projectile robot in this game. Oh, and the Javelin has got hooked up on the arena hazards there, specifically designed to make sure your wheels cannot get traction. The VI2 catching a little bit of a clip there on the Javelin and turning him over. That is amazing. If we take a look at the ride-along cam here, we can see that the Javelin is indeed on its back, firing its jet engine and not really getting anywhere. The VI2 now circling for the kill. Who knows what he is going to do? Technically, all he needs to do now is wait for the count out. But as this is the first battle, I just don't feel like it's going to be as simple as that. Indeed, he is coming in just to make sure that this little touch really does finish him off. The explosions are going everywhere and the uh, DMP, DMP mod is showing things flying around. But I think the actual damage that has been done here has only been done to the javelin. I might actually stand corrected as it appears that the back wheels on the VI2 has actually been taken out, but one of the main features of this craft is the fact that it has extra landing gear to lift up those broken wheels so there's nothing really to worry about. Even to the point of having rockets on the back to replace those main drive wheels that have been broken there. Now what is the VI2 doing? He's moving away. You can see our Kerbal cameraman having a little bit of a dance over there. He appears to be lining up. Is he going for the final ram? Cease has been called. He has been declared the winner, but this is not enough for him. Oh no, no, no. Damage still needs to be dealt. The VI2 is out for synthetic blood. Here he comes through with the final charge. Rockets bright breathing. Landing gear spinning. That cargo bay at the front gaping like some giant sea monster coming to devour its opponent completely. Here we come for the final shot and... Boom! Total and utter annihilation on both sides, but ZTech was indeed the, declared the winner there long before this final destruction happened. The outcome of this epic first round battle means that unfortunately we have to leave the Javelin and Weatherflyer behind whilst the VI2 advances on to the final three man battle. The next match is between the Battle Forklift and the Reaper, so let's learn a little bit about these two robots. Callum's Battle Forklift is an interesting take on the standard lifter design, taking the classic no-nonsense industrial lifting vehicle and making it more suited for robot battle. It has a Shremek and an attitude to match its awesome name. 
Coming from the very darkest corner of your life, the robot that has the final say, the Reaper. This is by the Vestige YouTuber with a spinning blade up front, very popular in real life robot fighting at the moment, but will that translate to our little game here? Activate. Of course, the only way to find out is in round two of Kerbot Wars. The big battle between the battle forklift on the right, the Reaper on the top left over there. We cannot see the Reaper's blade spinning at the moment. Indeed, I believe that explosion was the blade getting spun up. But of course, we have to fight in the environment of the DMP mod. So whilst we cannot see that blade spinning, you can take it from me that on the screen of the Reaper, it is indeed. First contact is coming underway. The battle forklift getting right under and oh, explosions are rife. When the smoke clears, we get to have a little look. Here's a little, ba a little battle replay here. The contact was strong, but we couldn't really see what was coming through. The battle forklift rolling out of the way, though appearing to be on his feet. And we're getting word from the driver of the Reaper here, Vested YouTuber himself, saying that his power systems have been taken out. That one contact there was enough to send a shockwave through his entire robot. Jeez. Bringing it to its knees. In fact, it completely destroyed that robot. All I'm seeing there is a frame on the floor. The battle forklift driving away victorious. A quick look here at the wreckage. Just utter, utter destruction played out there. Battle forklift going through to the final. Once again, the Reaper's loss has resulted in him being relegated from the competition and the battle forklift moves on to the three-man final melee. The final place in that melee will be decided in this next fight between the fragrant seahorse and the doom buggy. They say whoever smelt it, dealt it, but the only thing this robot will be dealing is damage. The Fragrant Seahorse is Pulsar Gaming's brainchild with its unusual wheel design possibly giving it the competitive edge. When your fate arrives, make sure you are travelling with the Doom Buggy. Misaligned sturdy lifter with a super low ground clearance and low centre of mass hoping to roll all over her opponents. Our two Kerbotiers are set up in either corner. We have the Fragrant Seahorse on the right and the Doom Buggy on the left there. Activate. Okay, and here we are away on round three. The final place for the final melee is up to grabs right here. All they need to do is come into conflict with each other and walk away. Last robot standing. An easy concept, but that has been turned out to be quite difficult to do in practice. The red light are from the Fragrant Seahorse making the Doom Buggy look a little bit overheaty there, but as they come in close to each other, contact is made and they both bounce away uh, seemingly unharmed. Amazing. The flipper on the front of the Doom Buggy appears to be up, though I am hearing on the player screen everything is okay and functional. The Fragrant Seahorse weapon up front there, a little bit indistinct as to actual function. Uh, it is a girder that seems to just move around swipes left to right there is lots of bashing going on people are being flipped over but Bert being able to self write both these lifters having strong self writing mechanisms contacts are happening and players are being thrown everywhere the doom buggy being got on its back there this could be over for her, her right here but no the flipper comes through again unfortunately due to the way dmp works we do not get to see the individual flipper action but on the player screen much momentum is being imparted here to try and flip her back over on the wheels and there we go she did it amazing recovery there fragrant seahorse on hand to take advantage of the small instability of landing back on your wheels again and oh no Oh no, the Fragrant Seahorse managing to get the Doom Buggy on its side here. I do not see a sideways facing Shremek anywhere, so what will happen now? Perversely, the Fragrant Seahorse may be the Doom Buggy's only hope. If they come in and carry on being aggressive and attacking, there is a small chance that the Doom Buggy could be flipped on its wheels. Indeed, in Kerbot Wars, anything can happen. Fragrant Seahorse having a few explosion issues on the way over, but if we come in for the player cam here, we can see that the Doom Buggy is almost stranded. Fragrant Seahorse actually being aggressive, but the countdown timer has now started. 
We do not have long until this fight is declared over. Jeez. And that is it. The Doom Buggy has been relegated out. Fragrant Seahorse going on to that final free man melee. With that final battle determined, we can see that the Fragrant Seahorse will join the VI2 and the Battle Forklift into the three robot melee to decide who will walk away from their arena with their head held high as Kerbot Wars Series 1 Champion. Pulsar Gaming with the Fragrant Seahorse here, raving to go. Activate. The VI2, of course, controlled by Zedtech, and off in the distance there, the Battle Forklift, controlled by Callum. The battle is underway and who knows what is going to happen now as we ride along with the VI2 just to get a close eye view of what is going on here. We can see the battle forklift is coming in for the strong attack. These two are both strong contenders on the ram and move away tactics here. Both going in for it. Let's see who comes away victorious here. There is a bounce, not any explosion. This is a bit of a shocker though. On a lot of screens there appears to now be two battle forklifts. We will figure out which one is real as we continue on. Maybe it's that one, maybe it's not, but the Fragrant Seahorse now is involved in battle. Zedtech is indeed folding out his spare wheels. That first contact must have done more damage than we originally anticipated. The battle forklift is on his side. I am hearing that perhaps he has run out of power or his main power unit has been destroyed. Explosions from that contact there. The VI2 on its side. The Fragrant Seahorse seems to be functioning fine. Getting in and really being aggressive there. Trying to shake it up and... Oh no! He's managed to turn himself upside down whilst trying to attack the VI2. Can he self-right? We're not sure. Let's have a quick look at the battle forklift here. Yes, indeed, its power generation units have all been taken out, thus rendered uh, obsolete in this particular battle. Back there, we can see the battle of the Shreemex, both the VI and the Fragrant Seahorse jittering around as they try and sort themselves out. But there we go. The VI2 is on its wheels and ready to get on the attack. Though he does look a little bit unstable. I think there is only three wheels in contact with the floor there. No, in fact, the front right wheel is completely missing from the VI2 there. He's going to reset his stream. I can come round to have a look if he can attack these two other robots. Having another quick look at the battle forklift there. He is definitely out. And this fragrant seahorse in the background jittering around as he tries to right himself. I kind of feel both are immobilized here. But the judges have not started the countdown yet, and I am not the one to make that cool. The VI now firing up his rockets, trying to come in for that final attack, make sure he really can secure that victory really strongly. The timer has started now. Three, four, it's all over now. This is only just a matter of time. I cannot see any of them getting back on their wheels. Jeez. And there we go. We have our season one Kerbot Wars champion. It is Zedtech with the VI2, the strongest, most suited robot proven in season one. Many step forward. Only one remains in the battle arena. The Fragrant Seahorse, the Battle Forklift, the Doom Buggy Reaper, and of course the Javelin. All these came and all these fell towards the might of the VI2. He's going to do a victory flip, and I am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. If you feel like you have what it takes to make one of the strongest robots to come forward and take the VI2's championship title off him, drop me a line on one of the many methods of getting hold of me down in the doobly-doo. I am taking robot applications for Season 2 as we speak. And of course, if you really, really have enjoyed what I've done here and wish to help support me making more great content such as this, I do have a Patreon account, patreon.com forward slash twitchy, as simple as that. Come along, drop me a dollar a month, and I will be forever grateful and indebted to you. And to pay back that debt, I will continue making such quality content as this. I would like to extend my heartfelt thank you to all the Kerbateers that came along to fight in Season 1. This literally would have been impossible without you. It would have just been me staring at a grey square going, ISN'T THIS EXCITING? So yes, thank you very, very much. 
that was season one of Kerbot Wars. We have our champion. I will see you in season two, which is going to be even bigger, even stronger, more explosions, but better fights. Oh, it should be wonderful. I will see you then when we're all going to do that. And as a final piece for your entertainment, I will leave a massive everyone involved melee in the background. No commentary, just the video, just to see how much fun we actually had putting this together. Bye!